Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. Eddie Folk is one of the most recognisable characters on the competition circuit. As the official IFSC photographer, he travels the world with the athletes and the organisation, taking pictures of bouldering, speed and lead. We caught up with him during the World Champs in Innsbruck during the summer to find out a little bit more about this amazing photographer. My name is Eddie Folk. I run the circuitclimbing.com which is a photography and journalistic business where I write about things happening in the broader climbing scene but mostly focused on competition. I also work as the official photographer for the IFSC documenting all the World Cups, World Championships, big events around the world and I am lucky enough that I have several brands like Nihil, Madrock and 510 that sponsor me and I just travel the world shooting for them as well, pretty much on the road all the time. So for me, when I'm working at a World Cup, my days can be incredibly long and of course then there's multiple days so it can be incredibly draining. I would normally get up around 7 or 8 in the morning. Normally I won't have breakfast, I'll just walk through the shower, walk out the other side, put on clothes, pick up my gear and head to the venue. I like to be at the venue for a competition at least an hour before the event because I want to look at the routes, I want to get a feel of what they are. Quite often, if I'm there early enough before isolation or on a day where there's more than one round, I'll take the time to talk to the athletes because I want to know their niggles, what's going on with them, if there's anything. It kind of gives you a little subconscious on what you should be shooting. Then I will shoot the rounds. Normally I'm shooting for a variety of angles and I'm looking for a selection of different shots. I have a style I like shooting, but I have to be conscious of doing different styles and fulfilling a bunch of tasks within those styles. So capturing sponsors, banners, capturing logos, capturing both profiles of a climber, everything like that, capturing them on multiple problems because you don't want to finish a day with 100 good shots of 50 good climbers all on one problem just because it looked pretty. You, that's not effective. Normally I would finish shooting, so if it's a day where there's a final, I will normally get back to the hotel between 10 and 11, um, or even a day with us qualifiers. If it's a big competition, sometimes I won't get back to a hotel before 10 or 11. Um, I will snatch a bite to eat, because normally at that stage I haven't stopped all day. I'll put, my bat I'll put the first set of batteries on charge, normally stack the batteries to be charged through the night, and then I will do a photo sort, delete all the photos I don't think will be usable, then do a photo selection out of the photos that are left, start editing them. In a big competition, normally I'll edit till 2, 2.30 in the morning, get those photos sent out, get to sleep hopefully by 3, and then get up at about 7 the next morning and do it all again. Every year when I shoot competitions, there is an end of the year. Competition season for international competitions generally runs from early March where it starts in the UK with the Quiff, which is the introductory competition for the season. Then you go through a series of competitions. You have the Quiff and Studio Block, which are like your warm-up competitions. Then you go into your World Cups. You have a few other invitationals towards the end as the World Cups taper out. And generally from November or December through to February, March every year is, is a down season. For me, I just like to get out and climb because I seldom ever get to climb in season. There are times I realize I haven't put my shoes on for six weeks at a time because I'm just working or traveling all the time. I'm in different countries, in different time zones. I have jet lag, I have jobs to do. Climbing sadly has to come second. So for the last several years, I haven't gone back to New Zealand in my holidays. I've simply gone okay, where do I want to go bouldering? Where do I want to go climb routes? And I'll go to Red River Gorge, I'll go to Bishop, I'll go to Spain. Invariably what will happen is I'll bump into sponsored athletes who represent some of the brands that I work with and I'll end up taking photos of them. But, I mean, I love it. It's, you know, sure, it eats into my personal time at that stage, but it's this great opportunity to normally hang out with some really engaging and interesting human beings and document some very cool things. As a professional photographer in climbing, 
It's really important to stay unique, to have a style, and to be recognizable for your work. So with the influx of different photographers coming into the sport, you're seeing more and more styles, and a lot of them are fantastic styles. A lot of the photographers in climbing shoot wonderful photos. It's important for me, because photography is an artistic endeavor, is not to change my artistic style just because I see someone else does a great black and white or a great high key, high contrast photo and go, oh, I should shoot like that now. There are times I will experiment with how other people are shooting or I'll add it to my repertoire. But the important thing for me is integrity around my photography style, which is, I always say, close mid range. So I like to capture the whole climber. I like to capture where they're moving into to give a sense of space so that when you look at a, one of my photos, you have context of where they are in, a, in the climbing wall. Other photographers, for instance, are fantastic at getting close up on just a climber's face and hands, and they're like this. But the next hold could be a jug, and you don't know that. So with my background in photography coming from motorsports and mountain biking, we're always shooting them moving into space because you want to give that sense of movement. I try and have that same sense in my photography, and I feel that, I wouldn't say it sets me apart because we can all shoot that way, but over half a million photos after many, over many years, I'm pretty good at doing that. If you are a passionate photographer, but you are not a professional, you are just an amateur that is passionate about climbing and photography, and you want to combine them, the main thing to do and the very important thing to do is to start shooting your friends, to start shooting local competitions, to start at the grassroots and get an understanding of what works and what doesn't. When they talk in photography, quite often you'll hear about composition, about light, the rule of thirds, things like that. And often in climbing photography, you don't have the opportunity to make all of those things work for you like you would in a studio, like you would in a model shoot or something like that. So instead you need to find what replaces that. So if anyone would like to find my work, it's all online. You can find it on thecircuitclimbing.com, which is my website. You can find it on Instagram, The Circuit Climbing. You can find it on Facebook, The Circuit Climbing. And you will also see it very regularly on the 510 and Madrock Instagram and social media accounts as well. Thanks for that, Eddie. Now, Eddie's got a funding page which is linked in the description below. It's an expensive business traveling the world and taking the photos that we all look at. So consider going and donating and making sure he does it for a long time yet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.